Whale hunting ban hits parliament. Some destructive weather in the north and the east. Some beloved wings fly away and more on this episode of the Reykjavik News Desk. First up on the Reykjavik News Desk, a bill calling for a ban on fin whale hunting was introduced by Pirate Party MP Andres Inge Jonsson. The bill also had the support of every party in the opposition apart from the center party. And just for clarification, um, despite the name, the center party, Midflokkerin, that is, is not a centrist party. They are, in fact, a right-wing populist party. I just wanted to clear that up because it sometimes confuses people. Anyway, the bill was immediately referred to committee, which is not at all unusual. Bills, whether they're introduced by members of the opposition or even ministers themselves, usually go to committee, sometimes several times, before there's a final vote taken on the bill. But of course, this raises the question, which committee should the bill go to? So Andres Inge wanted the bill to go to the Environmental Affairs Committee, whereas Parliamentary Speaker Birgit Almansson believed it should go to Industrial Affairs. Now, normally... Deference is given to the person introducing the bill to decide which committee the bill goes to, so it was a little bit unusual that there is some pushback on this. Now, this matter is made all the more intriguing by the fact that it's very likely that some members of the ruling coalition, that is, the left Greens, the Independence Party, and the Progressive Party, some members of the ruling coalition may vote in favor of this bill. So it's kind of a roll of the dice in terms of whether this bill is going to pass into law or not. Now, you may be saying, who cares what 63 highly paid professional politicians think about whale hunting? What do the Icelandic people themselves think? Well, the most recent Gallup poll on the matter shows that 47% of Icelanders are against whale hunting, 31 support it, and 21% had no opinion one way or the other. Interestingly, the percentage of folks who are categorically against whale hunting was greater than the percentage of those who are categorically in support of it, at 21% versus 14% respectively. Furthermore, a Maskina poll from late last August showed that opposition to fin whale hunting has been growing, which should actually be of no surprise. Fin whale hunting has no historic or cultural roots in Iceland, it has no domestic market, it doesn't turn a profit, and it's vehemently opposed by the tourism industry in Iceland. In fact, fin whale hunting in Iceland is only conducted by a single company, Kvalo Hauf, and the CEO of that company has been very diligently telling reporters that he is certain that he has the support of the entire Icelandic nation behind him. Now, to be fair, it's entirely possible that he's basing this opinion not just on pure denial, but also on another recent Gallup poll, which showed that 7 out of 10 Icelanders opposed a recent protest action taken against whale hunting, wherein two women climbed the masts of two whaling ships and stayed there for some 33 hours. And they only came down because they were forced to, because the police had taken away their food, water, and warm clothing. Now, while that particular action is seen as heroic by some, and it's very possible that what the police did violated the human rights of the protesters, the possible human rights violations did not seem to matter to most Icelanders, and I think I can explain why. So there are a number of issues that Icelanders can disagree with each other about. And there's a tendency when foreigners get involved in these discussions for people to get defensive, to be like, you know, mind your own business. This is something for us to work out. This is our issue and our issue alone. Well, the problems with this are fairly obvious, one of them being that fin whale hunting is not something that only affects Iceland. That said, it is an understandable response, psychologically speaking. I mean, it is pretty embarrassing that this millionaire man-child appears to have the entire government in his grasp. It's embarrassing to see the articles in the foreign press. It's embarrassing to see how people abroad react to this. That embarrassment becomes even more palpable when people come to this country and voice their concerns either in word or in deed. Even if the things that they say and the actions that they take, these same critics would completely agree with 100% if they were said or done by an Icelander. The only foundation that I can see in this criticism is that if Icelandic anti-whaling protesters are willing to support foreign women of color receiving the brunt of the police force in the name of the cause, they should be willing to do it too. And they have done so in the past. As I mentioned in a previous video, actor Benedict Erlingsson at one point chained himself to a whaling boat in 1987 in protest against whale hunting. 
Whether or not Icelandic anti-whaling protests will engage in direct action this time around remains to be seen. Maybe they will. Meanwhile, the whaling ship that was initially grounded for breaking whale hunting regulations has been allowed to sail again. But at the same time, there are even more regulations put in place now. And the whaling season is nearly over. Maybe with the ships back in port, it'll be possible for Parliament to have a reasonable discussion about this issue, but I wouldn't bet on it. In other news, does this look familiar to you? If you've ever been to Vegamoda Stigud in downtown Reykjavik, it should. This is a distinctly Icelandic take on a very popular, and I do mean popular, mural idea. But instead of using angel wings, it was puffin wings, which were painted instead. And this is a type of mural art that seems to be specially crafted for those who spend way too much time on Instagram. Hi, I'm one of those people. Anyway, I've linked to the Instagram of the artist who did this mural in the description below, but I really hope that you got your puffin wing selfie in now because the mural is no more. Yeah, sad to say, it was only been up there for like less than a year and it's already very sorely missed. However, a new mural has been put up in its stead and I just wanna say, if you ever visit Reykjavik, take the time to take in the street art. We have some great street art in the city. So when you visit, Take the time to saunter, sachet, if you will, and look at some of the murals that you might see around town. In fact, because these murals change so often, it's very likely that you'll see different art each time you visit here. The entire city is like the world's biggest art exhibition. The east and north of Iceland has been hit with some pretty atrocious weather lately, with one home completely destroyed in the North Icelandic town of Seglifjötter. Now, the owner of this house... Um, well, originally from the United States, does have family in Iceland, and he came here about eight years ago. And when speaking to reporters, he said that he had been used to this type of weather in Florida, but he never expected to see something like this in Iceland. And I understand his surprise. I mean, I've been living in Iceland for 24 years now, and in that time, I've definitely noticed a change in the climate. The rains have gotten heavier, the winds have gotten stronger, and the stormier seasons are lasting longer. Combine this with the warming temperatures and you get incidents such as the landslides that hit Seydisfjordet in December of 2020. And while the rains in East Iceland have been strong enough in recent days to warrant evacuations, those evacuations were mercifully called off. And so it looks like the town of Seydisfjordet is safe for the time being. And finally on the Reykjavik news desk, I'm happy to report that something very rare and wonderful happened in Reykjavik City Council. Every single party agreed on something. As I reported on in my last video, a very, very small minority of people, and I do mean a very small minority, like a little over a dozen people, have been trying to import anti-queer bigotry from abroad, particularly aimed at trans people. Their attempts at misinformation have been largely unsuccessful, due in large part to the Icelandic people themselves uniting to take a stand against bigotry and support queer folks. Alexandra Briem of the Pirate Party, herself a trans woman, thanked city council for every single party uniting, showing support for a joint platform statement made by city council against bigotry. This joint platform statement, amongst other things, voices unequivocal support for the National Queer Organization and the work that they do in Reykjavik City schools in teaching tolerance and respect for others, as well as reiterating the city's staunch policy against hate speech. And I gotta say, as a queer Icelander myself, as cynical as I can get about politics sometimes, it is pretty heartwarming to see every party in city council spanning left to right, uniting behind this single cause. As I've said before, it gives me hope for the future. So that's all I have for you today on the Reykjavik News Desk. Be sure and like it, subscribe. And just as a reminder, last Saturday's AMA is up on my Patreon for public viewing. So if you're ever considering signing up to be able to take part in an Ask Me Anything session, you can now check out what that's like. Um, it's generally, as the name would suggest, a time when, yes, questions are asked, but mostly we just hang out, we reconnect, we have a laugh. It's a really great time, and I would love to see you there. The date for the next Ask Me Anything session will be posted very soon, so stay tuned for that. Also, also, my next single topic video will be dropping on Monday, and that single topic is my time in Icelandic politics. This was a topic that was decided by a viewer poll on my Patreon, wherein patrons are able to vote for what single topic they want to see me drill down into, and this was the winner of the last poll. So 
a new single topic video poll will be posted on my Patreon very soon as well. But look forward to that video on Monday in the meantime. Now, the Ask Me Anything sessions and the viewer polls and much more are things that you can get through signing up for my Patreon, which is linked in the description below, which reminds me, I want to thank Corinne Vasquez, Marianne Ward, Christopher Hunter, Marianne Moores, Kimberly McDaniel, Iceman98, Octavia Hrund-Jonsdotter, and Alan Bagame for being patrons on the $20 level, Ian Kingsley and Laura Johnson for being patrons on the $15 level, and Biathlon Alaska, Melissa Pfeffer, Christine Trowbridge, Halfstein half Himen Lyomi Regenoson, Stephen Ellis, and Vivi Carvajal Schaffner for being patrons on the $10 level. You folks rock. That's all for me at Newsdesk. Be good to each other.